hope you join us today. And I just want to give you a little bit of an overview of sort of what we're going to be doing this evening, and then we'll get, get going with the actual presentation. Um, so as you know from the meetup, this is the title of this meetup is Moving Your Career Forward, Developing a Portfolio of Mentors and Sponsors. And so that is the primary focus of our, our discussion today. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a presentation. This is a, sort of an excerpt from our mentoring program launch, which happened in November. But the slides were so excellent and so apropos to both mentoring and sponsoring that I thought we'd just go over it um, once again. So this, this was given by Lucy Sanders, who, who is the CEO and co-founder of the National Center for Women and Information Technology, and she's also a Bell Labs Fellow. So I'm just using her slides literally. Okay, so first of all, I have a poll for you. If you were asked to explain the difference between mentors and sponsors, how confident are you that you could tell the tell what the difference is between a mentor and a sponsor? Just something to think about. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the answer. A mentor is someone who advises. A sponsor is someone who acts on your behalf within your company. Okay, and then just some elements of a mentoring relationship. A mentoring relationship provides tips, strategies, advice, networking, and it helps you increase your confidence and competence, reduce your isolation and stress, and navigate unwritten rules within your company. Um, it forms at the request of a mentee or as a result of a formal mentoring program, and it can exist at any level of the organizational hierarchy. So it could be uh, a coworker, it could be your boss, it could be someone higher up in the company. It, it can really be sort of any kind of relationship um, for mentoring. All right, so sponsoring has a few different elements. First of all, it provides public and private endorsement and advocacy for highly visible stretch assignments, jobs, and promotions. So it's, it puts you more in the line to move forward in your career. It enables career advancement and positive visibility with senior leaders. It, it forms at the discretion of the sponsor who drives the relationship and expects loyalty and performance in return. And it exists at senior levels of the organizational hierarchy. So not just anyone in the company can be a sponsor. It has to be someone in a position of power. Okay. Poll number two, I believe that I have how many mentors? Think about that question. How many mentors can you name just sort of currently or how many have you had in the past? All right. And then there are, according to NCWIT, seven secrets of mentoring relationships. And, and these secrets are taken from uh, a series of materials that are available on NCWIT's website called Mentoring in a Box, which I highly recommend. It's it's basically has everything you need to start a mentoring relationship and to sort of work through setting goals and all of those things. So these are the seven secrets. Number one, agree on purposes and roles from the beginning. Set realistic goals and expectations. Learn to better promote yourself. Establish timelines for goals and evaluate your progress. Encourage and accelerate learning outside of your comfort zone. But shielding you also from major professional errors or missteps. And this is more for mentors. Don't try and just create someone exactly like you if you're in a if you're mentoring someone let them sort of have their own individuality but you sort of want to help guide them along the path and the last one is do listen listen and then listen some more okay on to sponsors how many of you can say that you even have one sponsor or do you have lots of sponsors
are some really interesting numbers on this slide. Um, for me, the most interesting one about, so this is the green as a sponsored women and orange is unsponsored. And I particularly find the last statistic interesting. So the number of, the percentage of mothers who stay employed, 85% of, of mothers who are sponsored stay employed, only 58% who are not sponsored. And the other statistics are also, you know, it, it just, it really does make a difference. And what's tricky about sponsor, sponsorship as opposed to mentorship is it, it has to happen organically and it sort of at the, at the initiative of the sponsor. So it's very hard for you as an individual to initiate a sponsor relationship. They have to decide that you're worth investing in. So if you're looking for a sponsor, put yourself in positions where sponsors can see your work and where they can be more confident and comfortable in taking a risk on your behalf. So you can't just expect that to happen. You've got to you've got to get noticed within your company, basically, to be sponsored. Um, they they have a lot of resources um, for helping technical women and. I encourage you to go to their website, ncwit.org, and, and check those out. Okay, so rule number four, I believe that I am or could be a mentor to somebody, a sponsor to somebody, a leader for organizational change. So just, just think about that. What roles are you willing to take on? And as we always say, there's, this is a volunteer organization. And we really need volunteers. And I, I will tell you specifically for the mentoring program, um, because we're trying to get it off the ground and, get, and going, we, can, we could use mentors in the fall. I mean, we could use volunteers for um, some of the events that we're trying to get set up. Or, you know, there's also informal ways to help. Just hop on our Slack channel. I mean, our Slack. 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 Hop on Slack. And, and just, just Get join in the discussion and, and share what you know or ask questions if you don't know things. Uh, but that's a really easy, painless way to help get things going. We have like no current discussions in our mentorship channel and that is sad. So <laughs> help us get it going. Help us get the dialogue going and keep it going. Um, and you can volunteer to help out at future mentoring meetups. Even if you can only help at one event, we, we just really can use some help. And the other way you can help with our program is to be a virtual or in-person mentor to someone else. That's it. Okay, so now we'll move into our panel discussion and what we've, I, first I want to introduce our panelists. Um, Alex Olsh, Alex, stand up for a sec. Oh, <laughs> she, I'm sorry. She is the information security engineer at Mapbox and she is a director at Women Who Code DC, a director of, uh, I don't know my title actually, but I do network stuff. <laughs> okay, so she's a director. She directs things. Yes. Right, and she wanted us to tell you that before joining Mapbox, she built, configured, and secured large intranets for the Department of Defense. So she, and she's very good at security. Yeah, I'm just okay. starting to think. Oh, well, <laughs> she, she's very interested in security. Um, Catherine McClintic, she is an associate software development engineer at Living Social, and she's also our director of education at Women Who Code DC. So she sort of oversees all of our study groups. And if you don't know what those are, we have, thank you, Catherine. Talk to me later. Yeah, talk to me <laughs> later, but we have study groups for the following languages, Python, Ruby, we have a front-end hack night, we have an Android development night, and and then just sort of miscellaneous tech talk. So, but Catherine's the one to talk to about if you are interested in any of those. Okay, next we have Evan Blair Taylor. She is a tech-savvy writer, designer, and agile project manager, and currently consulting. So we're happy to have her on our panel. And 
Leslie Nooper Kapoor, who is a senior software engineer of the Enterprise Architecture team at Capital One and also <laughs> the director at Moody Code VC. So I'm going to turn the time over to our, our panelists, and they're just going to share a little bit about their mentoring experiences. And then in about 15 minutes or so, we're going to break into small groups and have small group discussions sharing how you found the mentors that you've had and what some of your experiences were. So, but we'll go ahead and let you guys talk first. So whoever wants to start, maybe start on this end. Sure, I'll start. Yeah, um, I would be the first person to tell you that I'm awful at like networking and getting to know people and like putting myself out there. And um, one thing that I found particularly useful in terms of finding a mentor and actually finding somebody who ended up being my sponsor was going to meetups, going to, because I'm interested in Ruby and Rails, going to Ruby meetups, um, being visible, not being like obnoxiously visible and, and loud, but you know, talking to people, having conversations with them that are about the technology. And eventually they'll get to know you, they'll get to know your name. Um, Women Who Code has been, as an organization, uh, has been a great place for that as well. The woman who ended up becoming my sponsor and sort of the reason that my resume got paid attention to, I think that's the correct grammar, at Living Social, um, was involved, was a, a member of a, a woman, um, member of the local tech community and was active on our Women Who Code DC Slack and sort of said, okay, you know, Hiring people at Living Social, you really should be paying attention to this person, and she sort of put herself on the line for me. And I don't know that she would have, well, knowing well, like I know her well enough to say she wouldn't have done that if she had sort of seen my name on Slack. But because I interacted with her at um, at hackathons, at meetups, and she sort of knew that I was involved in the community, and I, you know, had thoughts about code. I might not know everything about code, but I know what he does. Um, she knew that she could sort of take a risk on me and put sort of her reputation um, on the line a bit for me to get me noticed. Um, I don't think of myself, in the past, I didn't really think of myself much as a mentor, and then I realized, well, mentorship doesn't always have to be, okay, we're going to have a coffee with, with my mentee every two weeks, and we're going to talk about stuff um, that's on their mind. It can be, um, in the case of like the study groups, of helping somebody out um, who's got a question about Ruby, or helping somebody out who's... Um, trying to get the Sublime shortcut installed on their Mac or something like that. Um, you know, mentorship doesn't have to be, I'm constantly mentoring this one person all the time. Um, it can be sort of little bursts of you happen to um, kind of come up with opportunities. I don't have much to say as Catherine does for now to start. Um, I wanted, I was open to speak in this panel because I feel like I've had a unique, that's kind of a cliche word to say, experience with both sponsorship and mentorship. I've had a lot of sponsors in my, my old life, that's what I call it, uh, when I used to specialize with Microsoft, on Microsoft SharePoint for beauty as a defense contractor. Um, I guess SharePoint is highly visible um, in the beauty, and I think that's why I had people like the CTO um, at the hospital I used to work. He um, Actually, I wanted to leave SharePoint. I got kind of bored of it working on it for three years, and that's why I'm here now at Mapbox. Um, but uh, before... I, so he, 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 he really, he put his career a little bit on the, on the line there. When I was leaving uh, my old place of employment, he promoted me. And, I, and it was kind of strange to be promoted at age 25 to be in charge of, you know, three, a small team, three of the people who were twice my age. Um, but that probably looked risky to a lot of um, other people in the IT department there. So I really appreciated that. At the same time, he didn't know that I was planning on leaving three months later. So I, to be fair, I didn't commit, I didn't say, he kept asking, do you want this position full time with me forever? And I said, no, I'm not sure. I need to think about it. Um, so it's kind of vague, so I didn't do that. Um, but how I ended up getting out of SharePoint um, was actually by going to meetups and finding a mentor. And the best place that I um, found a mentor was actually at DC Femtech's Hack for Good. Um, I ended up um, hanging out with Beth Soderberg, and she really inspired me. Um, all the things that in the presentation that you that had about what makes a good mentorship relationship. She pushed me out of my comfort zone. She set a timeline for me. She was just so psyched to meet me, and she wanted me to, to fulfill my dreams. And I just was hanging out with her after the hackathon, um, and she just kind of gave this for free. I didn't ask for her to give me this advice, but it was awesome, and I, I loved it, and so I thank her a lot. Sorry. Hi. Um, I have the... I had a very modest beginning in the sense I was never like somebody who was an overachiever everywhere that I would go. I was just, I was just a casual person who graduated college, got a tech job, was working there, 
uh, but I think I what, during the presentation I realized I was talking to uh, I was talking to these people this morning. There was, I'm not sure if I have a sponsor, but I think I do have a very strong sponsor. My mentor actually was a person who um, kind of figured that I uh, needed help because the person who was assigned to me as my buddy, as my mentor, was kind of like the person who, who wanted to make me as a mini him. Like he wanted to be, oh, this is the right thing to do, you should do this, but that's not how my brain works. Right when I was a kid, every I have a very I have an attitude that I ask a lot of questions and I do a lot of why is going around. Like if you just tell me this is how things work, I would question you. I would say, wait, why? Like why do I need to do it this way? But a lot of people are not comfortable with that. Um, initially, when I was in college, I realized that the more the mentors that I would have, the better I would perform. And then slowly I realized, no, this is confusing. They're all saying different stuff. No, 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 no. Maybe I should drill down to the best quality mentors I have the better I would perform. But uh, when I met this person who was, at my, who was my tech lead at work, I realized that it isn't quantity, it isn't quality, it's actually the, the kind of relationship you have with your mentor, it's the, it's the communication that you have, it's the compatibility which matters. So it doesn't matter if you have one or 100 mentors, it doesn't matter if they are MIT grads or if they're just local high school dropouts. What really matters is that you and your mentor have a great compatibility. You, he, he, he or she is ready to listen to you, or you as a mentor should be open to listen to other people, find out what their problems are instead of figure, you know, just assuming, oh, th this is what they're saying, so maybe this is what they want. You know, ask them. Ask them what do they want, and this is what he did, and he stood up for me multiple times. He encouraged me to mentor some of the people who then came on board. Uh, and um, when I was, bef right before I was leaving job, like I knew, knew three or four months before then I'm going to leave my old job and I'm going to join Capital One. Um, I helped my company uh, bring aboard something which they never had. I was the only junior software engineer that they had ever hired, so they never had like a getting started kit. So before I left, I kind of made this getting started kit. I was like, nobody knows how to mentor, but everybody wants to. But just going up to somebody, sitting by their side and doing pair programming can be very intimidating. Like maybe that person is not comfortable with that. So I helped them build this mentor kit, which is a getting started if you're the first time, and if you're just joining, hey, this is what you can do, this is what we provide you to do. Um, and I've had, it's only been like four or five months, but I've had my CTO call me and my ex-CEO call me and they say, we, we owe you a beer because it's been working great. And the person that we hired uh, as my, as my um, substitute, and then they had a couple more other software engineers which are on junior level, and they felt very comfortable knowing that there was something that they could look to. So in this case, the mentor really was somebody that they never actually interacted with. Like I've never met those people. Uh, I've never really had a communication, but that, but I kind of helped them with the documentation and my experience that I left behind for them. Um, I, I think I started really like having a relationship with mentors in high school, and it was kind of like. The generic oh you walk up to someone this is someone that's where I think I'm gonna be in five years like post college this is where I want to be so I'm gonna talk to this person about what it is that I want to do and um, and then as I got into college a lot of people were talking about well you need to find mentors that are actually in the company that you work in and I went through a series of internships and they were all like short-term periods and so it was like trying to develop a mentor relationship in six months, and then like you actually want to carry this over to another company, like you don't even know um, if you're gonna be in the same city. Cause I'm originally from Houston, and I moved to DC for internships, and would come back and forth, and it was like trying to develop mentor relationships, and then carry over the mentor relationships I had from high school and college in Houston, and Baton Rouge where I went to school. And then I like realized, it's not always like someone who has to be five years ahead of you. Maybe it's someone who's at the same life stage as you. Maybe it's someone who's behind <coughs> and they're trying to get to where you're trying to go. Um, it's it's like the mentorship is you. what you give is what you get. And so it's not always that you have to be like looking at someone who you aspire to be like or you aspire to have what they have. Um, sometimes it's just like a personality. Sometimes it's um, a particular skill that you think a person has that you think would be Useful. Um, for me, a lot of times at the end of an internship, I would talk to whoever my director was, and they would tell me, you know, this is the feedback on, you know.
know, what we think you need, and if you want to get into this position, this is the things you need. And they would say, you know, like, you need to have project management experience, at least have product management experience. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what a project manager or a product manager was. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, that doesn't seem accessible. But then when they say, like, these are the three things that you need to have as skills in order to be a project manager or in order to be a product manager, then I can see those in the people that are in my circle, and I can say, okay, this is the person who may be able to help me with this, or this is the person who may help me with that. Um, and then on the sponsor level, I've had probably about two or three sponsors, and most of them were through programs that were like, um, like internship programs where you got matched with a mentor or a sponsor, um, and it was more of just like throwing yourself out there, and then if they saw you know, potential in you for whatever it was, they would try to help you out. 